Hello everyone, this is Emily speaking from Couch English, channel dedicated to practical business English. If you follow our channel, you can find there are different kind of information about the processes, about the trends that can be quite typical if we think about the business environment. Today I decided to take to the spot the topic of generations. And when I was thinking about that topic, I thought that probably it would be valuable to talk especially about the youngest generations. And why? Well, my thought and probably my observation as well is that quite often when I see people working in different kind of the businesses, in different kind of the industries, they form a lot of different kind of the opinions. They form a lot of different kind of stereotypes, unfortunately quite negative, especially about the youngest generations. And I would say it is connected with the fact that a lot of people who come from X generation who are millennials, they have been already working there for several years. So they have certain types of the habits, they have certain type of working styles, they have their communication styles, they have already quite anchored ways of collaboration and cooperation with other people. So for somebody who has been there in the market for the last 10, 15, 20 years, it's generally much easier to communicate and collaborate because of their expertise and the experiences. And if it is about the Zalfa generation, so the bridge between two generations, Gen Z and also the Alpha generations, they are the ones who are pretty young. If it is about Alpha generation, well, they are still kids and teenagers. So they haven't yet entered the job market, but probably a few more years and we will already see them. But if it is about Gen Z, well, they are at their 20s right now, so they already entered the job market and we can already perceive them at work in their daily routines. And as I can see, quite often it works this way that especially managers, they form, again, I would say different kind of stereotypes and opinions about, especially, of course, Gen Z. I would say that those opinions are rather negative, I would even say harmful, they are other generalizations. And my strong, strong belief is that if it is about those stereotypes and generalizations, they do not come from the reality. They are not based on facts, but they are just connected with the differences between all of us. And the same as right now, older generations, they form the opinions about the youngest ones. It works exactly the same uh, if we talk about other generations, if we talk about the previous years. Because if we have a look at millennials, when they were entering the market, it was pretty the same. They were said to be the first who appreciated the work-life balance. And I can really recall that the older generations were saying, oh, come on, there is something wrong. They don't appreciate work. They just want to relax. And right now, if we have a look at millennials, I would say that they're extremely efficient, they're extremely hardworking, but in that smart way. So this is also the matter of the priorities. If you think about somebody who is at their 30s, 40s, well, usually that kind of people, they simply have different kinds of the priorities. They have to work because of the mortgages, because of their home duties, because of the family obligations. And they have to work they have to earn money. If you're at your 20, you simply have different kind of the priorities. You can still enjoy life, I would say. You don't have to think about long-term commitments because simply there is something different that you're interested in. And I, again, would say that this is just the matter of age. That right now, if we talk about Gen Z, if we talk about alpha generation, they have different kind of priorities. And probably in several years, those priorities, they will have to still be somehow reshaped. But hopefully, at least from my point of view, some of their priorities, some of their values, they will remain unchanged. And again, hopefully, I would say that some of the other generations, they will really learn a lot from the youngest ones. Something what I personally really value a lot if I observe the youngest people is their ability to think in a smart way. Even if we talk about the education, 
when I was going to school, it was pretty typical to learn everything by heart, to read a lot and just memorize, memorize, memorize. Well, I'm not sure if right now when I'm a bit older, I use all that kind of the knowledge. But if it is about Gen Z, if it is about the alpha generation, they work in a completely different way. They educate themselves in a different way. They, they learn in a different way. They just grasp what is really important and they can very easily and very quickly decide if the information which is being delivered to them is valuable or maybe completely not and they can skip it. And I would really love to learn that kind of agility, that kind of capability, uh, because it would be much, much more valuable to me. If we think about those two generations, so Gen Z and Alpha, so the Alpha generation, well, of course, uh, they are the ones who are being raised in the era of digitalization and social media. Especially if we think about Alpha generation, Although probably if I were to say about, uh, about Gen Z, it is really the same. They are definitely not only digital natives, but they are really fluent. If it is about different kind of the technologies, they are the ones for whom smartphone is like the natural part of their life. It's like a natural part of the body, I would even say. They are the ones who can choose and they can easily assess and evaluate, evaluate different kinds of the social media. They are observing which kind of social media are being more or less attractive. They are expecting the rise of different kinds of the applications. Well, generally, if it is about digitalization, automation, optimization, and different kind of digital equipments, they are really the integral part of their life. And you can easily observe it, that most often, if we think about the youngest generations, they can just touch, have a look at different kind of applications, different kind of the systems, and very, very easily and smartly navigate those applications. Of course, here, when I'm talking about that generation, I know I'm using some kind of generalization, although it is probably also my mistake to do it, because still, I believe that if we think about the generations, which is a very popular topic lately, uh, we do a lot of harm to ourselves and to the other people when we separate people. And in fact, thinking about generations, that's what we do. Because usually we assign a certain kind of the qualities, certain kinds of the characteristics to each particular generation. And then we can form that kind of the judgment even that everybody who belongs to generation, uh, like for example, millennials, they behave in certain way. Or everybody who belongs to Gen Z also behaves in a certain way. And that's definitely not true. Because if it was like that, it would mean that right now, everybody who is around 50, they have no idea what internet is, and they have no idea how to easily and quickly and smartly navigate different kinds of the applications. And I'm sure it is not like that. So please treat it as a form of unfortunately generalization, having in your mind that still the most important aspect is to treat everybody individually. And as long as we can put ourselves in the shoes of the other person, as long as we can understand that person, as long as we're interested and curious, then of course, it really changes all the perspective. Otherwise, we will just have some kind of encoded beliefs in our mind, always assuming that everybody belonging to certain generation behaves in a certain way. And that's not true. So even here, thinking about those digital natives, we just have to understand that, again, not everybody who belongs to Alpha, who belongs to Gen Z, they are digital natives, because for sure, there are people who have different skills, competences, and different kind of the talents. So that's just some kind of the assumption. On the other hand, if we think about young people, I would say that something what we can easily observe is the fact that they are changing right now their values. And again, that is something what I really, really appreciate. I would say that I was born and raised with that kind of the thought that work is something extremely important. I live 
to work and I have to be extremely ambitious. I have to be extremely dedicated. I have to be extremely hardworking to achieve success. From the time perspective, I'm not sure if it is some kind of the belief that really brought my spirits to the, to the top. I'm not so sure about it. Of course, it was very valuable, but still right now observing, especially younger generations. And on the other hand, they observe their parents who are usually exhausted, tired, nervous. That's probably one of the reasons why they are changing their values. They don't want to just work and work and work, but they want to have a pleasant and nice life. It still doesn't mean that they are, for example, lazy. They are not dedicated. They just want to appreciate their life. And that's the value which I also appreciate if I think about the youngest people. The other thing which is very important if we think about the youngest generations, especially from the point of view of the business perspective, uh, is blended learning. And that's also some kind of the difference which I lately observe running different kind of the workshops or trainings. I would say that the traditional form of workshop or even training or the lecture, the one which lasts, for example, for eight hours, there is even a discussion or just the monologue of a trainer. In fact, the one which I do right now, which I'm doing right now, it is not something what can be appreciated by the youngest people because they are used to different kind of the uh, aspects. They need a variety. They need to immerse themselves in different kind of the topics. And to be able to do it, they also need an interaction. They need change. So they focus on one aspect and then they just need another form, for example, of visualization. Just changing the topics, changing the perspectives, changing even the tools which are being used for the purpose of, for example, education. So traditional lecture let's say at school, where the teacher is running 45 or 60, 60 minute lecture. Well, no, that's not anymore something proper for the youngest generation. So we need just to understand it, that people are individuals. They concentrate on different senses. Some of them, they are visualizers. The other ones, they are audible. And the same as young people, they really appreciate that variety of the forms. I would anyway say that everybody should have the ability, the possibility to adjust their education, to adjust their learning methods to, the, to their perception even or to their personality. So it is something that we can learn from the youngest generation. And one more thing, which I already mentioned, but on purpose, I will relate to that one more time, is the fact that 77% of Gen Zalpha, they say that being happy is the most important thing for them. Fantastic. Because if you work a lot, if you dedicate a lot of time and effort to business, to overtime, for example, I'm not so sure if you can really, really be happy. Of course, at the first glance, yes, because you're satisfied with your job, with your results, with your achievements. Although on the other hand, is it about everything? So does the fact that I work a lot makes me happy? I'm not so sure. And again, I would underline what I said earlier. It is something that I believe the other generations, they can really learn from the youngest ones, just to enjoy their life, be happy and select what is important and what is not, and we can simply reject it. On the other hand, as I mentioned at the very beginning of that podcast, it also happens that we are going to hear a lot of different kinds of the stereotypes. And please believe me that plenty of times I heard from people in business that if it is about the youngest generation, they are lazy, they are over demanding, they are like the snowflakes. So even if somebody wants to share with them the negative feedback, like constructive negative feedback, they will be oversensitive. And it's very difficult to share with them anything what is negative, even some kind of the improvement feedback. It is sometimes said about them that they are impatient and they are quickly bored. But is it really true? Those are not observations. Those are not facts. Those are just generalizations again and the stereotypes and our judgments. And I would say that 
one of the main reasons why we create that kind of the judgments is the fact that we simply do not understand different kind of the approach or we simply do not understand that sometimes we can have exactly the same values. It's just that the behaviors representing those value, values, they are different. So it might happen that, for example, for everybody, no matter from what generation that person is, no matter what age that person is, everybody can have exactly the same values. For example, respect. It's just that depending on the way how we were raised, depending on the environment in which we used to live, we are going to present respect in a different way. So it will be quite typical that if it is about boomers or X generation, for them respect is connected with hierarchy. So approaching somebody who is higher in the hierarchy, just like that in informal way, oh, that's disrespectful. And on the other hand, if we think about the youngest generation, it's not disrespectful. This is the matter of partnership, of equality, of diversity and inclusion, which is very important. So the same value, respect, it's just that the behaviors, they will be different. So let's stay with that particular thought that we just need to understand that everybody is different. People have their values, people have their priorities. And what we can do to communicate and collaborate better is simply to try to put ourselves in the shoes of the other people, to be humble and try to understand that something what I appreciate is not necessarily something what you appreciate. And that's okay. We can be really different and there is nothing wrong in that. I hope that you liked what I said today. And of course, if yes, I can definitely invite you to some further podcasts, webinars, and just follow our channel. Thank you very much for that.